Hi, I'm Sean Prophet, host of NPTR, coming to you from our studios in Los Angeles. I'm here to talk to you today about voting. I ran across a video this week made by a guy who calls himself Punk Patriot. He's obviously a very sincere and concerned young man talking about the future of our country. This election season, we are being given two false choices and a choice that is not those two choices in Green Party candidate Jill Stein. Actually, that's completely wrong. We only have two choices. Now, I will agree with you, the two parties are very similar in a lot of things. They're very close to each other on the political spectrum. Somebody like myself, I'm right over there with Jill Stein. I'm right over there with Rocky Anderson, okay? But I will not vote for them, and here is why. In the last 100 years, no third-party candidate has ever even come close to winning a presidential election. In January 2013, either Barack Obama or Mitt Romney is going to take the oath of office and become the next president of the United States. And I'm here to tell you that we are facing the most important choice we've faced in a generation. In the 2000 election, people who voted for Ralph Nader in Florida put George Bush in the White House. We cannot make this mistake again. I'd like to talk about people who don't vote. If you don't vote, you basically don't ever get to complain about what's going on. It's really kind of strange that in a democracy such as ours, that we don't have 100% participation. Think about it. There is absolutely nothing radical about not voting. It's not idealistic. It's not pragmatic. It achieves nothing. I agree 100%. Not voting is not radical. It's just irresponsible. This kind of cynicism is essentially obedience to those who would control us. At least Gary Johnson's anti-war and believes that weed should be legal. Let's talk about Gary Johnson, or Ron Paul for that matter. Libertarians want to legalize drugs, and that fools a lot of young people. But they want to do it by getting rid of government, which leaves the corporations and the wealthy in complete control. Now, to vote for a candidate is an endorsement of their policies. Voting for a candidate is making a choice between the available options. You may not agree with a candidate's policies, and you may still vote for them, because you disagree with their opponent more. To vote for Obama is an endorsement of the policy of assassinating United States citizens with drones. It is an endorsement of the policy of indefinite detention. Let me say right now, one child being killed by an American drone is one child too many. However, we don't live in a perfect world. We're in a situation where we're fighting people where we either go in with drones or we put boots on the ground. One or the two. Or we get out of the Middle East entirely, which means we have to stop using oil. This is the choice every president will face. Every president in U.S. history has made the decision to kill. We're not just talking about drone strikes. We're not just talking about indefinite detention. What we are talking about is the climate, the economy, the Supreme Court, energy. If you're a progressive and you think a Republican is going to be better than a Democrat on drone strikes and civil liberties, I don't know what you've been smoking. We have agreement with the people that we need to have agreement with to be able to use drones to strike at the people that represent a threat. So there you have it. Romney will use drones. He will continue, if not increase, the same drone attacks that you're complaining about. If you fail to vote in opposition to the murder of children, then you are complicit in the murder of children. Let's talk about complicity in the murder of children. This country consumes 25% of the world's resources with only 5% of the population. All of the sweatshops, all of the factories, all the toxic waste around the world, children playing in garbage dumps and ingesting toxic waste, we make those products. Those factories are for us. That is complicity in the murder of children. Another huge difference that will affect all of our future between the two parties is economic policy. One party is for tax cuts for the rich, for gutting Social Security, for gutting Medicare, gutting Medicaid, voucherizing public schools, and essentially destroying civil society in this country. If he's elected, and if he does what he promised to do, Medicare will now grow broke in 2016. We can't afford a tax cut if Medicare is not solvent. We can't afford a tax cut if Social Security is not solvent. We can't afford a tax cut if we have these enormous deficits. Now, people ask me all the time how we got four surplus budgets in a row. What new ideas did we bring to Washington? I always give a one-word answer. Arithmetic. Trickle-down economics has given us deficits. It's given us tax cuts on the wealthy. When you give a wealthy person a tax cut, you're basically sending them on vacation or telling them to go buy a new Ferrari at the taxpayer's expense. I don't have any problem with yachts or Ferraris or vacations. Everybody should have what they earned after they've paid their fair share. This is not class warfare. This is basically saying your vacation, your Ferrari, your yacht is not more important than a kid's lunch at school 
or than our roads or our bridges or our, or our future. Corporations are people, my friend. This idea that corporations are people is one of the worst ideas in American history. It's right up there with slavery. Slavery was the fiction that people were property. And the idea that corporations are people is the fiction that property can be a person. One party thinks that corporations should be allowed to spend unlimited money on election campaigns and lobbying. The Democrats have promised to overturn Citizens United through a constitutional amendment. The GOP is consistently terrible, abysmal on human rights, gay rights, women's rights. The Democrats have repealed Don't Ask, Don't Tell. The Democrats in, are in favor of banking regulations. I haven't even talked to you yet about the Supreme Court. And we have a situation where during the next four years, two out of the nine justices are expected to retire. That means whoever becomes president in 2013 will appoint two new Supreme Court justices. Now, if we elect Mitt Romney, those two justices will be in the mold of Scalia and Clarence Thomas. Mitt Romney has radical views on abortion, on gay rights, on women's rights. He would roll back progress 50 years. President Obama promised to begin to slow the rise of the oceans. <laughs> and to heal the planet. My promise is to help you and your family. You hear that laughing and smirking about the climate and you're gonna tell me both candidates are the same? How do you help someone's family if the climate is deteriorating and killing the economy? Climate change is not a hoax. More droughts and floods and wildfires are not a joke. They are a threat to our children's future. And in this election, you can do something about it. The climate affects all of us. It is the largest force on the face of the earth. How can you be running for president of the most powerful nation in the world and ignore the most important issue of our time, climate change? In 2010, the Democratic Party introduced legislation into the House of Representatives to cap and trade carbon emissions. That is a concrete step and something the Republican Party would never, ever do. So don't fail to vote. Don't waste your vote. Get to the polls and vote for President Obama, the progressive alternative. Our future depends on it. I'm Sean Prophet. Thanks for watching. You can catch me every Sunday night at 9 p.m. Eastern on NPTR.net.